So we're going to talk about some transformations that are specific to the Inca. The Inca are really interesting uh, and have been the subject of a lot of different theories. Um, because their civilization is so different from Western civilization. So we're going to get into that a little bit, how it relates to uh, transformation theory. So let's look at some objects and think about what they might do. Um, there's two that, I'm, that we're going to look at. Um, these first are called tupus, and the ones in this picture were collected in the Machu Picchu area in Peru. Um, they're made out of silver. They're not very large. You know, you can't tell the scale from the picture, but the heads are about 10 or 15 centimeters across, and the pin part is maybe about 15 to 30 centimeters long. So, you know, they're, you know, about yay big. Now, ask yourself what possible function these things could have. I mean, is this a fan? Is it some sort of signal that you wave? Um, you know, if you want, stop the video and just have a look and think about it. Well, the answer is something that you can see now in this picture, which was sourced under a Creative Commons license from the British Museum. Uh, a tupu is a sort of clothespin. The closest thing that we have in the West maybe is something like a hat pin or a pin that goes over the breast as a decoration, but here you can see it's used to hold the garment together. The garment itself is sort of like a blanket in that it's wrapped over the body and some Peruvian clothing there would be a tie at this point, but here she's using a tupu. Now sometimes two tupu would be used. They were, they were used in pairs often. You can see the hole on many of the tupu, so presumably there would have been a loop or some kind of fastening also. Um, now you can see in this picture that she has other jewelry which is also made out of silver and those are a bit more familiar like a necklace but the tupu just seems really interesting and surprising. Um, at any rate my point in showing this is to try to suggest how difficult it is to understand something like an artifact without seeing the transformation which is the body experience that is related to the idea and actually gives rise to the idea. Because it's very obvious once you see how a tupu is actually used to hold the garment together and how it had this utilitarian function as well as a decorative one, you know, it all makes perfect sense. You say, well, what's the surprise? But, you know, before I showed you this, if you didn't know what that was, I, I'm not sure you, you would have been able to guess. So this way of connecting a garment together was used by millions of people all over the Andes side of South America. And, you know, I don't think that it's necessarily used now, but up until recently it was, it was, it was very common. Um, so if we compare this novel way of attaching a garment, which we don't seem to have coming out of the Eurocentric experience, you know, what we can say is that there are transformations which are found in the Inca or Peruvian society which just are not present in our experience. And this general observation that different groups of people definitely have different transformations, which they discovered on their own and made use of extensively, should surprise us because it means that there are many things that we take for granted about our lives. You know, we just assume certain things are done a certain way based on our ontogeny, which is the set of transformations which we have experienced and which people living in our civilization, you know, pass around to each other as the contents of stories. So now let's move on to a second object. This is called the kupu. Um, pause the video and take a minute and try and think about this one. You know, it's fairly large. It's probably about, this one's about a meter across maybe. And here's a second one also. Now, if you look at these, you'll see that there's a large set or crowd of cords, and the cords have distinct kinds of knots tied in them. The knots are placed in seemingly very organized fashion up and down the strings. There's also some different colors to the strings, you know, and they're not, they don't all match. So, what did this do? Well, the Inca had a large empire 
but they had no system of writing. And I think that in itself is a really interesting thing, that these were people who had advanced to the Neolithic stage, perhaps be quite a bit beyond the Neolithic stage, and they had depictions of things and in amazing art and amazing technologies, but no phonetic or even hieroglyphic system of writing that we're really aware of. The transformations involved with writing, which I will do a separate video on, as they are quite interesting, those were never experienced by the Inca, but they still needed a way to keep track of, of quantitative values. For example, the Inca had a very detailed census of their empire. They knew with fairly good accuracy how many people lived there, and that number was in the millions. So the quipu means talking knots, and the knots had to do with retaining you know, we're, we think probably qua uh, quantitative values. So the truth is no one is 100% sure how the quipu worked because the transformations associated with it have been lost. The Spanish, uh, when they invaded and brutally colonized, um, saw quipu in use and they knew what it did, but they didn't really care what it did that much because they had their own systems. Um, and the people were all killed off, basically, and the knowledge was lost. So the transformation of working the quipu was not communicated to the Spanish. I mean, not really. It would, no Spaniard experienced the quipu on their body. They saw them. They knew what they were doing, basically, as a thing. But they didn't experience them. And so because they didn't experience them, then that transformation was lost. So if you think about what it is known to have done, because it's a matter of historical record, you, know, you can imagine just on your own body and using your own hands how it might have worked. Um, we can find our way back to that transformation. So imagine, first of all, you live in a culture in which weaving is immensely important. You know, maybe you're a weaver. In Sumeria, where writing was invented, the people were potters, a lot of them, and writing that they invented was based on clay. They had lots of clay, and they did lots of things with clay. The Inca had clay, but llama hair, you know, cloth woven from alpaca, that was really, really important to them, and so was the llama. So that stuff that we have to start with, in our case here, is string. And imagine that you're going to travel on the Inca road, because the Inca had really extensive system of roads which traversed the whole empire. And they were not like Roman roads that were paved. You know, they were more like paths. But they went up hills and down hills, and sometimes they had tunnels. And, you know, they, it, was the, it was a real transportation system. And starting from some central place, you are going to travel to, say, all the villages along that path, you know, maybe a hundred miles worth. And for each village, say, you're going to add a string to your quipu. And when you are at that village, you count the people or inquire about the people, and you get a number. Now the next step is going to be recording that number using a knot or a group of knots. And it's fairly easy to imagine that some system of knot tying could be used for that purpose because knots are actually exceptionally expressive. You know, they involve a number of turns and different kinds of knots might represent different quantities. Knots are also a repeatable movement of the hands. You know, you think about not the numbers on your phone, but the act of physically dialing your phone. You know, what happens? You move your hand in a particular pattern and you do that same pattern the next time for that same phone number. So physically, within the body, there is a repetition specific to a number. And knot tying was like that. So recording a quantity using a knot implies that we have some abstract understanding of mathematics, at least to the extent of counting and addition, and maybe some other operations. You know, we, we just don't know 100%. Uh, but the quipu was the instrument, you know, maybe something analogous to an abacus, which allowed for that process. The knots talked. And if you think about the solution for a minute, uh, it's too, actually a somewhat complex problem, and I think you'll have to agree that it's quite remarkable. So what we learned from these things, you know, from the tupu and the quipu, is that 
Human beings do not have any general set of transformations which comprise a locked-in base set of ideas for civilization. You know, the ideas that we have are very much the collections of things which have evolved through pragmatic requirements, and they're built out of whatever happens to be at hand, whatever happens to be available. You know, it actually appears to be a very ad hoc process. And, uh, you know, from my point of view, it also seems to follow rules related to natural selection, such as being stochastic, you know. So different things would have been tried until a solution that was good enough to rise to the occasion of being a story uh, would have been found. And then it would have become knowledge. And then everyone, you know, would have been, would have started doing it. So, for example, if silver were not readily available to, to the craftsmen, the Inca craftsmen, the tupu would not exist, and some other transformation would have been used instead to figure out how to work as a clasp to hold the clothing together. You know, in the West, they came up with a different solution, which was buttons. Uh, you know, which is a completely different concept coming from a different experience. So if weaving were not a big thing for the Inca, then they would have found some other way to do their census rather than the talking knots. So if you like this content, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, that is the YouTube way, and I would appreciate it. Thanks.